Stair Construction, Unit 1, Lesson 3, Basic Stair Run Calculations. Upon completing this lesson, you will be able to perform all the necessary mathematical calculations to design any straight run stair. To review the basic straight run stair terminology, total rise is the vertical distance from finished floor to finished floor Unit rise is the height of each step. Unit run is the length of each step, or the tread. Total run is the total horizontal length the stair stringer will travel. Stringer length, used to determine both length of material and, builder and build stringer and for checking accuracy when laying out the stair. Phantom run is one unit run past the total run. It is used to calculate the stringer length. And the pitch length is the unit diagonal of the unit rise and unit run. Calculating a straight run stair can easily be accomplished with a construction master calculator, but it must be done in the sequence presented in this lesson. Please do not use the stair key for any of your calculations as it uses different methods for calculating unit rise, unit run, and stringer length. Calculating a stra straight run stair. All straight run st stair designs are based upon the most common trigonom trigonomic theory, which is the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem states that when we have a right angle, or 90 degrees, where A intersects at B, we can accurately calculate the length of line C. This theory also applies to roof framing and is the basis of all home construction. Consider it one of carpentry's golden rules. The seven sequential steps for calculating a residential straight run stair are Determine the total rise. Step two, calculate the quantity or number of risers. Step three, calculate the unit rise or the height of each step. Step four, determine the unit run. Step five, calculate the total run. Step six, calculate the stringer length. And step seven, calculate the pitch length. For this teaching example, we will use the following measurements. Total rise from finished floor to finished floor has been determined to be 79 and 3 quarters of an inch. We will use 10 inches for our unit run. Step one, determine total rise. A number of factors can determine total rise. Never assume the floor is level or parallel to the upper floor. Please review the laser level video for how to measure total rise. If a lower floor, stair tread, and upper floor are all covered in the same materials such as carpet, we can use subfloor to subfloor as our total rise. This is because when you add materials to each surface, the total rise decreases on the lower floor and increases on the upper floor at the same amount, and so the net effect is zero, and we use the subfloor to subfloor as our total rise. If, however, a finished floor is going to be placed on the upper and lower floors of different materials, we use the following formula to determine total rise. We start with the rise from subfloor to subfloor, which we can measure using the laser level, and then we make an adjustment. We add the thickness of the material for the flooring on the upper floor, and we subtract the material thickness of the flooring material on the lower floor. This will give us our total finished rise from finished floor to finished floor.
Again, our total rise for this example is exactly 79 and 3 quarters of an inch. Step 2. Calculate the number of risers. The formula for cal calculating the number of risers is total rise divided by your maximum rise. Maximum rise is not your unit rise, it is simply the maximum that is allowed by code. It may also be some random maximum determined by an architect or a homeowner. In this case, we are doing residential construction and the maximum rise is seven and three quarters. So our math would look like this. Our total rise is 79 and three quarters divided by our maximum rise of seven and three quarters. If you punch that into your calculator, the result should be 10.29 risers. We cannot have anything less than a whole riser. So we're going to round up to the nearest whole number. 10.29 rounds up to 11 risers. Our stair will have 11 risers. Always round up, even if you have a small decimal. This will ensure that you do not have any risers that exceed the code maximum riser height. Step three, calculate the unit rise. This is the height of one step. The formula for calculating unit rise is total rise divided by the quantity or number of risers. In our example, our total rise is 79 and three quarters. Our quantity of risers is 11. So 79 and 3 quarters divided by 11 will give us a 7 and 1 quarter inch unit rise. We can check for rounding error if we retype into our calculator after clearing it 7 and a quarter times 11, our quantity of risers. If you get the same total as your total rise, then you know that your unit rise has no rounding error. If instead you get a different number quantity than your total rise, then your unit rise has rounding error in it. This is okay, however, since we will be compensating for the slight difference when we lay out our stringer. Determine total run. Most residential homes stay true to a 10 inch run. This allows the stair to take as little room as possible. It also allows for standard tread material, OSB stepping material, which is 11 and a quarter inches wide. The additional inch and a quarter of width is for the nosing of the stair to hang over the face of the riser. Occasionally, unit runs are designed to be longer than 10 inches and will be specified on the plans by the architect. Since our example is a typical residential stair, we will use 10 inches as our unit run. Now we can calculate our total run. The formula for calculating total run is the number of treads or quantity of treads times the unit run. Note that there is always one less tread or unit run than the number of risers. This is because the bottom tread is our phantom run and is actually part of the lower floor and not counted as a tread. So since our example has 11 risers, it then has 10 treads or unit runs. So our formula is 10 unit runs times 10 inches 
equals 100 inches of total run. Now we can calculate our stringer length. Remember Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem states that if you take side A and square it and add side B and square it, that will equal side C squared. Do you see the Pythagorean triangle in our stair here? Note that it includes the phantom run on the bottom horizontal leg of the stair. Now we can calculate the stringer length. The traditional mathematical formula is total rise squared plus total run plus phantom run squared. Note the parentheses that you need to add the total run plus the phantom run before you square that number equals the stringer length. We will use the Construction Master Calculator. Using the Construction Master Calculator, we're going to enter the following. 79 inch, 3 quarter, rise, 110 inch, run, and then push the diagonal button. You should get a stringer length that is 135 and 7 eighths inches long. The quantity of pitch lengths in a straight run stair is the same as the number of risers. Since each pitch length must be of equal size, the formula for calculating pitch length is stringer length divided by the number of risers. Since our stringer is 135 and 7 eighths inches long, we divide that by our number of risers, 11, to get our pitch length of 12 and 3 eighths inches. Our sample stair calculation is complete. Our design will be as follows. Total rise is 79 and 3 quarters. Quantity of risers is 11. Unit rise, 7 and 1 quarter. Unit run, 10 inches. Total run of 100 inches. Stringer length is 135 and 7 eighths. And our pitch length is 12 and 3 eighths. Before you begin laying out or cutting any material for any stair, you must complete the next and most important step which is drawing a detailed sketch. For now, your sketches must look like the following. Later on in the course, we will be adding more detail. Here is our sketch. Note that we show the quantity of risers accurately. We indicate our total rise we indicate our total run, we specify our stringer length and our pitch length, in review we must follow each step sequentially, determine total rise then we can calculate the number of risers by dividing by our maximum of allowable rise. Once we have our quantity of risers, we can calculate the unit rise or the height of each step. We need to determine the unit run Typically, that's 10 inches for residential. We need to calculate the total run. Quantity of treads times the unit run. And remember, there is one less tread than the number of risers. 
Calculate the stringer length. Construction master calculator is our preferred method. Calculate the pitch length. Again, Construction Master Calculator will aid in dividing fractions. And draw a clearly detailed and accurate sketch. Please complete the written assignment for Unit 1, Lesson 3 in your course packet. You can either email the assignment to the instructor or print out a hard copy and give it to the instructor for correction. You have now completed Unit 2. You should be able to calculate any basic straight run stair. We encourage you to make up your own total rises and practice all seven steps in addition to the written assignment problems. This is the most basic and important skill you will need to master in order to design and build not only straight run stairs, but stairs with landings and other stairs as well.